Welcome to the Girl Guide Show. Today we will be talking about endangered species. My name is Samantha. And I'm Alicia. Alicia, before we start, do you have some terms to explain to the audience, right? Yes, of course. A rare species is a group of organisms that are very uncommon and not seen often. Rare species have small populations. Some examples are the angel shark, red crest tree rat, and the geometric tortoise. Endangered is where a species present in small numbers that can risk of extinction. One of the world's rarest, most endangered, largest flowers is the corpus flower, mainly found in the low-lying tropical rainforest of Indusazia. Some endangered animals are the African forest elephant, red panda, and the sea otter. If a species or a larger group has no living member and they are extinct, daughter birds, woolly mountains, and prehistoric dinosaurs do not have any living members. They are meat that they are extinct. Talia, can you tell us why can you tell us about some endangered plants and animals? Plants and animals are often endangered for two common reasons, pollution and habitat loss. For example, if people dumped chemicals in a lake, it would poison the sea creature that lived in it, such as beavers, fish, and other sea creatures. Also, if the same, an the same animals would lose their habitats, if people built houses and stories around their habitat. Welcoming up Chelsea. Hi Chelsea. Why do plants and animals become endangered? Two Canadian plants that are endangered are spotted winter green and horsetail spike rush. Two Canadian mammal mammals that are endangered are North Atlantic right whale and wolverine. Two animals around the world that are endangered are one ivory billed woodpecker, a North American bird so endangered it might actually be extinct. Two, a mere leopard, the world's largest cat, only 40 left in Russia far east. Black-footed ferret in Canada, they became extinct in the wild in 1987 due to habitat loss and diseases. Zoos and wildlife organizations are working to release them in the wild and give them vaccines. That's all we have for today. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. from the Third Water and Guides. Today we are here to speak to you about recycling and how this is an important thing to help our planet in reducing the amount of waste that goes into landfill. First we have Paige to talk to us ab about the use of less packaging. Packaging makes up 30% of municipal solid waste. You can reduce the amount of packaging you throw in the garbage by purchasing items that have less packaging. Overpackaged products often cost more than less packaged products. This means that you can save money when buying products. How can we reduce packaging? Some ways you can reduce pa pa packaging includes purchasing con concentrates and diluting them with water in reusable containers. Avoid single serving products in favor of larger servings. Take your own reusable cloth bag so you don't need paper and plastic bags. Thank you Paige, very interesting. Next we have Lexi to talk to us about recycling and composting. Recycling and composting is important because the earth does not have endless resources. So if you take something from the earth it's important that you can reuse it or put it back. In order to make an aluminum which, aluminum, which, um, which is metal can, first you have to dig out the metal which makes a lot of pollution. If you recycle your cans then they can get remade and they don't have to dig out new metal from the earth. Compost. Some people call a compost bin a food bin. 
If you're able to eat it, then you should be able to put it in the compost bin. Here's some, um, also here are some inf interesting facts. One can is 100% recyclable. When you put it in the blue bin, in six to eight weeks, it is back at the store as a can the same size. Composting keeps food from rotting in the landfill and releasing chemicals that contribute to global warming. What items can we put in the green bin? Well, some examples are big treats like cake, cookies, pie, muffins, and candies, <clears throat> fruits and veggies, sauces or dressings, meat, seafood, or dairy, bread, toast, cereal, and pizza. It's not just food you can put in the green bin. There's also paper plates, paper cups, paper egg cartons, wax paper, coffee grounds, and tea bags. Um, see more information what goes in each bin, visit www.hamilton.ca. Thanks, Lexi. Now we have Mackenzie to talk to us about recycling in our blue boxes. Are you a super recycler? Yellow recycling boxes called gold boxes are given to homes that show how they, they sort their recycling and garbage. They, they are for people who know which bin their trash, food, scraps, papers, cardboard, plastic bottles, glass jars, metal cans, and yard waste go in. They prove it by putting their waste in the right places at the curb. Winning a gold box is easy as one, two, three. Step one, you have to register your address to place on our list. Step two, put your green bin blue box and any trash or yard waste at the curb by 7 a.m. every week. Step three, put out one bag of garbage or less at the curb each week. Trash edit, they randomly select addresses to determine which neighborhood gets a trash edit. How curbside edit is done, they look at what inside blue boxes and green bins early in the morning before they are picked up. They check for food scraps in your green bin and at least two properly sorted blue boxes. They look to see if the right items are in the right bins. Gold boxes are awarded to super recyclers. Mackenzie, where can I get a blue box? You can get a blue box at any of these locations. Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, Glenbrook, and Hamilton. Thank you, Mackenzie. So I hope the audience found this very interesting, and thank you to Paige, Lexi, and Mackenzie for presenting your information. Remember to try and recycle it as much as you can.